Shiv, you're you're calling me up. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Ah, oh, fine. I'll get somebody else there. <laughs> um, how do I present this? Awesome. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, for like 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> this doesn't play. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, first, I would like to announce that uh, there will be a, a reprise of this talk on Sunday in the morning. Um, so if there's something you have that's conflicting, you can also check it out then. Um, however, today, I would like to announce and uh, welcome to the stage uh, our one of our most senior, uh, the senior scientist from BSS Labs, uh, and he's here to give you a presentation that, like, is just awe-inspiring. We are really, really excited that he was willing to do this for us, um, and so we really hope you enjoy it. Um, and, uh, like, if you don't learn something here today, the, the, clearly the problem is with you. So <laughs> thank you for coming, and uh, please, please, welcome Jacob Kozal. <laughs> Friends, family, esteemed colleagues, gracious guests, I welcome you to explore hot dogs. Hot dogs are a ubiquitous part of American and global life. Everybody eats them. Celebrities eat them. When you go to a ball game, of course you eat a hot dog, maybe even a ballpark dog. The presidents all eat them. But the thing about hot dogs is they're pretty standard how you cook a hot dog. You can bake them, you can boil them, pan fry them, grill them, microwave them. The, these methods of cooking hot dogs have been passed down by generations and there's very little variation. But thanks to a fellow senior scientist at BSS Labs, we have uncovered a method of cooking hot dogs that was left in the past. I present to you the Presto Hot Dogger. This claims to cook hot dogs in 60 seconds, and it can cook six hot dogs. Here is the packaging that was found with the archaeological study. As you can see, very much a 70s product. Quality, quality logo here. And now, we get to the technique. This is a fascinating method of cooking hot dogs, almost archaic in the presentation. You set, stick the hot dog. I need a mic. Is this a mic? This is a mic. right there, but we also should have a clip. You have a wireless mic. Oh, right up Well, you don't have to project. Okay. Hot dog. Okay, that works. Yep. Uh, hear me in the back. Yes. So let me redirect your attention 
into these metallic spikes. We take these conical electrodes and we plug them into either end of the hot dog, allowing us to plug the machine into the wall, running 120 volts through it, and cooking these dogs in 60 seconds. As you see here, it includes a very helpful pamphlet. You separate the cover, cover one to six. You can decide. Maybe you're cooking for yourself and you only want one or two. Maybe you're cooking for your whole family and you fill it up with six hot dogs. And you can do this in one go. You insert the cover back on and you put it in the wall and there you go. 60 seconds and these hot dogs are going to come out perfectly cooked. Now, I want to also emphasize, this is specifically for frankfurters. It says nothing about sausages or any other conical shaped meat product. Simply frankfurters. Now, for our testing, we used four brands to get a variety to make sure there was a consistency of quality. We used Oscar Mayer Classic Uncured Wieners, Ballpark Franks, Light Life Smart Dogs for the vegans out there, and Hebrew National. We also wanted that variety. We have turkey, chicken, and pork in one, chicken and pork in one, and then that solo beef Hebrew National. As you can see, the packaging. Um, I want to direct your attention right now to the horizontal nature of the ballpark and veggie dog packaging and the vertical nature of the Hebrew National and Oscar Mayer Wiener packaging. Now, before we can plunge into the depths of electrocuting hot dogs, we must first understand how does a hot dog cook in a traditional manner. So we ran it through the standard five cooking methods. Started with a pan fry. Took four minutes and 15 seconds to heat the pan up to temperature with a little bit of butter in it to make sure the hot dog got nice and brown and fried. And then we let them cook for three minutes and 10 seconds exactly. This led to a very linear temperature scale. They all started around 76, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And over those three minutes and 10 seconds, they were able to climb up to about 162 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. We then moved on to the microwave, a le lesser known, um, predominantly dorm room inspired method of ho cooking hot dogs. Um, very fast, no preheat time. And then we did a st standard 100 second cook for all of the hot dogs. This had a little bit more variety. As you notice, the Veggie Dog and Oscar Mayer were a little lower temperature at the end, whereas the Hebrew National and Ballpark Franks kind of climbed up at the temperature. That might be more the single and double source of meat versus the triple and Veggie Dog. Moving on, of course, to the oven. We baked them, preheated for about 15 minutes to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then cooked for an additional 15 minutes. Some ovens may vary, but for 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 minutes was a solid cook time. And in this instance, pretty even scaling for all of the hot dogs. However, the Oscar Mayer heated up pretty quickly. Um, and that's actually a tendency we notice in general. It's a smaller hot dog, so maybe that is why it cooks a little bit faster, gets to a higher temperature quicker. Moving on to boiling, it took my stove 14 minutes to boil. It, generally, it'll range from 10 to 15 minutes to get a wire to a boil, and then cooking for exactly five minutes. All of the hot dogs at once with the boil because you can fill a nice pot. And a strong variation here, um, ballpark franks really not getting up in the temperature. Quite, quite edible still, according to the sources. A little salty, a little chewy, but edible. Uh, Oscar Mayer, again, high temperature. Um, leads to a more solid kind of mouthfeel. And then the one everybody knows, grilling a hot dog. It took us 20 minutes. We lit the coals, let it preheat, and then cooked for exactly eight minutes. That led to good results with our grill. Um, generally, we found seven to nine minutes is the ideal range for cooking a hot dog on the grill. Um, fairly even temperature climb, getting higher up there in 180, 190, 200. Um, and they all came out with like a nice amount of browning on the surface, that crispy kind of crunch you expect when you bite into a grilled hot dog. So now we move on to what we're all here for, electrocuting them. 
we started by taking a resistance at a base temperature. Um, Oscar Mayer and Ballpark Frank up there with 2.1 and 2 mega ohms, and then the Light Life Veggie Dogs in Hebrew National lower with the 0.25 and 0.5 mega ohms. Assuming that that might be a result of the higher sodium content in the Oscar Mayer and Ballpark Franks or the variety of meats products within. Now here's, a, here's what it looks like when you line them all up. You get a nice amount of separation between each dog, and actually, as you see, there's a bit of a curvature. Uh, this allows um, a little bit of a spark in between and kind of gets that, that kind of seal down the side, which will pop open and let the juices open up but not come out. So that way, you, when you put it in your bun, the juices will spill, up, spill out perfectly but won't be wasted. Now we see some interesting temperature climbs here. Not a very linear progression. Hebrew National very slow to heat up. I think that's because of the single beef source there. However, spiking up well into 168 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the rest had a more linear progression and all ended up around 160. So some quotes from the experiments. This is all, of course, with the most important method, which was the electrocution. Oscar Mayer. Technically warm, warmer in the center than the edges. And actually, this Oscar Mayer experiment showed us that if you go back here, we started with 60 seconds as we were directed, but we realized that a 100 second cook time is much better for the hot dog, or it gives you a little bit more of a crunch on the inside and a generally warm inside versus here, it's te technically warm. So the ballpark franks, right kind of split. That's due to that kind of curve you get with that dog. It's a nice split. Not very hot, turning into, ooh, this one's pretty hot. Surface temp was high, cold and dead on the inside. <laughs> we can all relate a little bit. Uh, then the veggie dogs, ooh, surprisingly warm, tofu-licious, and synthetic smoke taste, a dope mouth feel. And finally, the Hebrew National. This one's better, better than the last, more evenly cooked. Again, benefiting from the 100 second cook time. Uh, smells like a hot dog. <laughs> this one tastes like a hot dog that's actually cooked. And of course, I'm a really bad vegan. <laughs> <laughs> so now, the comparison. We averaged out the cook time results for and initial temp and final temp for all the hot dogs. We scaled it down into a time range of 100 seconds. And here you can see that the hot dog, are coming from a very low initial temperature, ends up skyrocketing up very quickly, um, even kind of beating out the microwave a little bit in this one example. Um, and then we kind of go down pan fry pretty quick. A little lower is grilling it. Boiling and baking, both very slow because of that preheat time and then a long cook time. Now, we had talked about the charring. Everybody likes a charred hot dog. You want that outside to be crunchy. But what about the inside? Why does the inside have to be soft? As you can see here, by the nature of plugging in the hot dog and running the electricity through the inside of it, you get a nice char on the inside. So you can see the split that was so talked about, very juicy. And now we thought, what about larger dogs? What, what if you want to break barriers and go for that sausage? Well, you don't need to linearly align them. You can actually push them over one, even two spl slots, and you can fill up more space. As you can see here, these are some fat hot dogs now, and they have plenty of space to grow. Now, what is, what, is, what is a hot dog if you, if you don't try and see what limits it can handle? What, what does it take to make a hot dog pop when running 120 volts through it? So we did, a, we did an experiment with the Oscar Mayer and the Veggie Dog, and we ran them both up at 58 seconds, big popping sound. 75 seconds, a little bit of an electric sizzle. Uh, 100 seconds. This is when we really could tell they were cooking because it just started smelling like straight burning paper. Uh, 128 seconds, that paper smell's gone. It just smells 
terrible. 150 seconds, that's when the smoke starts really coming out of the machine, not just inside, but coming out of the cover. It smells char charred. Now, due to safety concerns, we had to shut down the experiment at this point. We want a pop, not a burn. Um, Veggie Dog came out at 171.2 degrees Fahrenheit and feels so weird. As you can see here, I understand why it feels so weird. <laughs> And the inside, after pushing it that much, nice and charred. Now, brand verdict. First, the Hebrew National Solo Beef Dog. Having a single source of meat really benefits the hot dog. It allows that even cook, that even flavor. Oscar Mayer follows up the Hebrew National, heating up pretty well so it's consistently warm, a solid taste, very well orchestrated hot dog. That's followed up by the Veggie Dog actually beating out the Ballpark Dog. So if you're ever going for a Ballpark Dog, maybe just go for the Veggie Dog instead. Now, Hebrew National Oscar Mayer number one and two, Veggie Dog Ballpark number three and four. I'm going to go back a couple slides. Okay, as you see here, Ballpark and Veggie Dogs horizontally lined. Hebrew National, Oscar Mayer, vertical. <laughs> so if you're ever not, not too sure about which hot dog brand to take, because there's many. You go to the store and there's a whole aisle of hot dogs. Go for that vertical packaging, that vertical branding. 100% of the time, it's going to beat out the horizontals. <laughs> Okay, so now what everybody's here for. How do the various methods of cooking a hot dog compare? Of course, the fan favorite is the grill. Everybody likes a grilled hot dog. It, it quote unquote, tastes like a hot dog. Pan frying it, also very successful. It's good if you're, you can't, don't have a grill, you have to be inside. Pan frying, very solid choice too. Number three, however, was the hot dog. People were pleasantly surprised. A little uncertain going in um, about an electrocuted hot dog, but the taste was generally sufficient. Um, beating out baking, boiling, and microwaving a hot dog. But this is where the hot dogger starts to really shine. Of course, a microwave is very fast. We give it number one slot because there's no cleanup. You just put it on the plate and you microwave it. Maybe you put some paper towels around to make sure that the moisture is correct. But hot dog or microwave, very competitive there. The pan fry comes in at a solid third. Following those is boiling, oven, and grill because of the lengthy preheat times and the lengthy cook times. So now we take that ratio of quality, time, and number one comes in as the hot dogger because it had satisfying quality and high, a high speed cook. Pan fry, again, good quality, decent time. So if you don't have access to a hot dogger, and I, I feel so sorry for you if you don't have access to the hot dogger, um, I would highly recommend pan frying them. Grilling comes in after that. Grilling is just a solid way if you, if you want to impress somebody, grill the hot dog. Microwave, better than boiling for time. And then boil and bake. <laughs> I would like to thank our sponsors. This was all done in collaboration with uh, GWS. And then our senior scientists, David Cantrell, senior scientist, David Shia, and senior scientist, Sophia Fondell. And remember, the mustard indicates progress. Oh. Yeah, what about questions and answers? Okay, okay. All right, questions? Any questions? In the back. Very serious question. Um, so I know that you had a wide variety of uh, ways to cook and produce delicious hot dogs, but I noticed that you didn't put down prime hot dogs, and since we are in a country that we love to fry things, mm -hmm. how is that not... So, it, it, that's a great question. Um, I, th I think the, the issue with a fried hot dog is that... Je oh, okay. So, the question asked was, why did we not fry the hot dog? Um, and the answer to that is, 
when you when you want to fry something, generally you want to apply a batter to it. You can think of like a corn dog where you surround the hot dog in a batter. Frying a hot dog solo is not really the standard method of cooking it because it'll be superior with that coating. So we discounted that method. Thank you. Additional questions? Uh, so obviously not everyone has access to a hot dog at home. Um, what is your go-to method at home when you want a hot dog? Summer? Uh, what is the question was what is my go-to method to cook a hot dog at home assuming I don't have access to a hot dogger because of course I would go for the hot dogger and my answer to that is that in warm weather months I would go for the grill I would take that extra time I would commit to it I think it's worth deciding in advance that you want a grilled hot dog however if it's winter months the grill is not as practical so I would go for the pan fry another question did you consider uh, using the hot dogger with a 220 volt option? Oh. <laughs> um, that is a ex- great question. Um, the issue we found is actually, oh, so the question was, did we consider the to run uh, 220 volts through the hot dogger instead of 120? And the issue we ran into was um, getting that from a standard outlet. We want to experiment, and what, what would a person at home use? However, that is a great foray into more experimental methods of cooking hot dogs, where we can really start upping the voltage, the current going through them, test what a hot dog can withstand. Uh, additional question uh, with in Man in the Red. Thank you. Have you considered uh, expanding the uh, experimental schools to other types of food stocks than hot dogs? Uh, the question was, would we consider expanding this to other foodstuffs within the hot dogger? And absolutely. We actually have recently come across another model of the hot dogger and different branding. Um, and that if you pay attention to Flock, maybe next year there might be another talk with that included. And we would love to have more food stuff. What, what happens when you put a carrot in the hot dogger? Of, of course the sausage. The sausage, we have to try out sausages. Um, maybe an expanded foray into non-meat-based hot dogs, like a whole gamut of different types of veggie dogs. Bananas. Bana- uh, another question in the back. Sorry, this is another question related to other cooking options that you didn't consider. Uh, why didn't you experiment with, say, a sous vide? <laughs> uh, the question is, why didn't we experiment with a sous vide? So we, we had many culinary experts on our panel of tasters. And the sous vide is a very popular choice in cooking meats currently. Um, unfortunately, while we did have sponsors, our funding was limited. And so sous vide has been put on the docket for the next round of testing. Uh, another question? So I'm into experiments and whatnot, and, and I really appreciate your expertise in the hot dog and kind of bringing it to us. But I'd like to, I'd like you to speculate: how would the hot dogger handle something like a swanky flanky? That being a hot dog wrapped with bacon around it. Ooh, Ooh that that is an exceptional question. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the question was, how would the hot dog, uh, a swanky, fr- swanky Frank, how would a hot dogger handle a swanky Frankie, which is a hot dog with bacon wrapped around it? Now, of course, you're going to have to push that cook time. You're going to make sure, I would not do the 220 volts with a hot dog where you're trying to cook the bacon on the outside because it's an inside-out method of cooking. So you run the risk of the bacon maybe not fully cooking. I would postulate that the bacon would be slightly undercooked but probably will hit an edible temperature. You might want to experiment with, we mentioned sous vide, maybe you sous vide the bacon, apply it to the hot dog, and then when you put it in the hot dog, you get that nice Nice charring from the electricity. Uh, any additional questions? How does one acquire a hot dogger? One acquires a hot dogger by laborious and meticulous searching on a website like eBay or searching through your parents' attic. It's surprising how many families purchase these Presto hot doggers. Yeah. Right there, they had one in their house. Uh, any additional questions? Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it, 
kind of a beefy miracle that this all was able to happen. So thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Is there no more, no more audio?